Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be taking a look at Revolta 2 inside of Sequoia Pro 17. We're going to be doing some sound design. Our goal is to get you to the point where you're confident in setting up a low pass pluck sound, loading a plugin, all those kinds of things. So here's Revolta 2. Let's start from the very beginning though. Let's turn this off. Let's go ahead and delete this from our thing here. It's in here, remove plugin. We will delete it. So here we are at the beginning. We got nothing. Okay, when you add a track, you've added a track and you want to add, in fact, I'll turn this off. That should be off for the moment. And we will add a plugin. So I'm gonna click over here on this plugin, uh, adding area, and I'm going to go to the plugin browser. There's this giant menu. If you wanna use it, you can. I'm gonna go for the plugin browser. And in the plugin browser, I'm gonna type up rev, for Revolta, and it should pop up. And I'm gonna double click it, it'll load in, and now we have it. Now I wanna trigger it with a MIDI keyboard. I'm not gonna talk about how to set up the MIDI keyboard here, but I have one in front of me, it's ready to roll. But when I play notes, we don't hear anything because you need to do what's called monitor your input. So we can do that by clicking this guy up here, and this will now monitor the input. So when I hit a note, and by the way, this will be loud, so I'm gonna turn this down real quick. So 16 dBs of volume reduction, it's still really loud. Uh, but there you go. So let's really quick talk about this loud thing. So this is a loud synth. The reason is if you go into the wrench icon, there is a volume boost setting, and we're just gonna take that to zero and double click this to reset it. Um, it it's just a way of turning up the volume. A lot of the sounds in here are gonna be really loud. And so I'm just gonna turn those off. And if you're curious about the visuals at the bottom, I'm on the visualization option here. So that's it for there. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of tuck this away up over here. And now things are a much more reasonable volume. There's a bunch of other options in here, but I consider only really one. There's actually two you need to know about. We'll come back to the attack click option in here. And the other one is the pitch range. Uh, when you use a, a pitch bend wheel, how that bends is gonna be determined by the range you give here. So if I give myself like two octaves, I can go like a lot further. So that's where this setting lives. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it on whatever. We're not gonna really use it. So I'm gonna turn that off and let's set the synth to as default as we can. If you come in, there's a bunch of presets in here, but there's not a single init preset or a, a default preset, uh, none of that stuff. I've tried hitting uh, reset before. And I honestly don't know what this button does. So um, we're just gonna set it back to default ourselves so that we have a starting point. Uh, Revolta 2 is an FM subtractive synthesizer. And I'm gonna do a few things. So first I'm gonna turn off the filter. I'm gonna turn off the effects. Our modulators are off. And I'm gonna turn off oscillator two and the noise. And we're gonna start from the beginning and work our way through the chain. So at the very beginning over here, this is our volume. This is the volume of the synth. And we have oscillator one right now. Let's go ahead and set that to a sine wave. So this is our generator. You notice the sine wave though is very low. I'm actually hitting notes that are pretty high. That's because we were playing a bass patch earlier. As, as you, you know, you can see we were on a bass patch and this transpose setting moves the notes down. So we want to reset this to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this up to zero so that now it plays in the register we want. It's just a way of moving notes up and down. That's all that transpose means. So if I hit like a C and it has transpose one, it would transpose it up to a C sharp. So if I hit C, it would actually play the note C sharp. So if you move it down to 12, that'll move the, every note you play will be an octave lower. If you move it to 24, it'll be two octaves lower. But for now, uh, this is totally fine. The next thing we're gonna look at here is our mode. So we have monophonic and poly. Mono means one note. And we have this glide control. And when I hit notes, they glide to the next note. So I'm actually holding down these notes, but you only ever hear the one, the last one that I glided to. And the reason for that is we're on mono, which can be great for some patches. We're gonna go ahead and go with poly for now. Uh, this will allow us to play poly notes or, or mini notes is what poly means. You see, now I'm holding them down. And we can play notes how kind of we expect them to show up here. These are some modulators down here. We're not gonna really touch these. 
uh, in this video, but they exist. And you should know that, you know, they're there. They're LFOs. They allow you to make things wobble back and forth automatically in interesting ways. Uh, we're not going to use them here, but definitely worth checking out if you want to do something on your own. We have oscillators one, two, and noise. Now this is a FM synthesizer, and it's part of the reason why it's capable of making so many sounds, despite how few controls there are, it's because FM is a really complicated thing, and it allows you to do all kinds of crazy nonsense. I don't want to dive into FM here, because this is a big, huge topic, it's kind of intimidating to even teach, let alone do, uh, but oscillator one is what we're going to be rolling with. We have two of these oscillators, and we can choose different waves for them. So right now we're on a sine wave. We could choose a saw wave. And then we have over here a pulse wave. And the pulse, we can change the duty cycle of the pulse. It's like how big or small that pulse is. Or we could choose another sawtooth. So I'll run with sawtooth two right now. I think that's pretty cool. The FM control we're gonna ignore. And then we can choose a mix, but since oscillator two is completely off, let's just set it to oscillator one. That way we get the volume from oscillator one that we kind of expect, and we could adjust our volume here. I really discourage you, please don't use this volume control unless you have good reason, because it's just a hidden volume control. Why would you do that? Don't do that, because then when you pop it up, we expect this to reflect our volume. We don't want hidden volume controls in places, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and take this down a bit. So that's pretty nice, okay. So we have our wave. Hopefully I've got you through up to here. And you understand what all these things do. There's a few things we're sort of glossing over just because it's more advanced and we wanna do a basic thing here. So let's go over to the amplitude envelope. So envelopes are a way of automatically controlling something about the synth. For example, uh, right now, when I hit a note, I expect the synth's volume to turn on and then to turn down over time. If I let go of the note, I expect the volume to go to zero. But you don't see me over here, you know, turning the volume knob up and down like a maniac because uh, that would be like a lot of work. And I, if I hit more than one note, like how do I deal with that? So we have an amplitude envelope. Uh, every synth will have one. And whether or not they show it to you is another story or they even tell you that that's the, the global one because envelopes can control a lot of things. In this case, it's controlling the amplitude. So the attack is how quickly it, it turns the control up, in this case, the amplitude. So this is how quickly it gets loud. The attack right now is set to 0.1 milliseconds and that's uh, really fast, basically instant. Then we have decay and sustain. Let's talk about sustain first. So first we attack, if I make the attack long, It'll take longer to turn on. Now you hear that click at the beginning. Uh, there, it's actually kind of a bit of a complicated topic on why this click is there, but we are going to click on the cog and there is an option for the attack click and to control its value. We're just gonna make that zero. This is another setting uh, that we just don't, we're just not gonna use very frequently. So we're gonna set that off. So now when I play it, it fades in and does exactly what we expect this to do. So. Yeah, turn, turn this off and please stay away from this until you're a little bit more versed and you've made a bunch of sounds. Then you'll have reasons for why you might grab those controls specifically. But for now, uh, just turn them off. So we see they, uh, they fade in over time. Now, what they're fading in to, what the control is attacking to, is the sustain. So the sustain is the level it stays at when I hold down the note. So if I have the sustain very low, and let's say we have a long attack, it's going to rise through the attack, and then it's gonna drop to the sustain. And it's still playing, it should still be playing, unless my sustain, oh, whoops, that's release. Let's grab the sustain and make it pretty low. There's our sustain. So we can see it's pretty low, and this one's in a value of dB. It's not in a time value. This is the level of loudness we're gonna stay at when we hold the note. How quickly we get to this, like let's make it even lower, is determined by the decay. We decay to the sustain level and that does take an amount of time. So I could have it take a second for us to get down there. And you hear now we sort of fade out. Let's say, whoops, let's turn this back to wherever that was. Let's make this really long, like five seconds-ish. And we slowly go back down 
to the sustain. So that's what that does. And then when we release the note, we hit the release stage. That's what the R stands for. And that's gonna be how long it takes for the synth to fade out. So if I have the sustain value off, but I have a release stage, I'm gonna hit the note. Let's make her decay a little bit quicker. And then it's going to be decaying to zero, but since I released the note, it's just gonna release from where I am. And I'll get a, a pluck sound. See, I let go of the key. Let's turn the decay up further. Actually, the, the decay plays very little role in this. It's gonna be mostly determined by the release. And let's make our uh, attack nearly instant. So we just get a pluck. No notes. So that's all with the envelope. Now these controls can be applied to a lot of things. In this case, they're controlling volume. So I'm gonna set this to act like a gate. So the way a gate works is, the sustain will be 100, the release will be very small, and the attack will be very quick. So basically when I hit a note, it plays, and when I let go of the note, it stops. It's like a gate. You shall pass, you shall not pass. You know, you can think of, you know, Gandalf sitting here running this thing. So that is our amplitude envelope, but we want a low pass pluck sound. I want the sound of the frequency is turning down quickly over time. That's what our filter is here for. Our filter has uh, a drive control that we're gonna turn off for the moment. And there's a, a cutoff control that we could move ourselves. Cause I essentially wanted to turn off like that over time. Uh, so right now we're on low pass. There's a couple other filter types, a band pass and a high pass. We're gonna just ignore those for now. We're gonna activate the 24 dB. Uh, what that does is it makes the low pass uh, just more aggressive. It will get rid of frequencies faster. That's how you could think of it. So again, we want this control here. The first thing I want it to do is I want it to attack and reveal the sound. I want it to show all the frequencies and then I want it to turn off over time. So I'm going to set the sustain to uh, zero dB, which is actually the loudest you can go in digital. Uh, see how it becomes negative after? So this is actually really loud. So it's gonna immediately turn this control up and then it's going to decay when I let go of the note. So if I if I play this, we'll, we'll hear it. And then it decays. Now for this, I'm gonna set the release on our amplitude envelope longer so that we have time to hear this decay take place. And I'll set the resonance up. This is a peak an amplitude peak where the cutoff is, and we'll hear it move. You know, just zip down there. If we have the release be longer, you can see the that's resonance, see that amplitude peak? And then we can hear the volume over here decreasing. So I'm gonna have the release be pretty quick, and I don't want it to be reliant on the sustain value because I want it to be a pluck sound. So I'm gonna set the sustain down, and instead I'm going to bring up the release and the decay. So it attacks and then it decays, but since the sustain's very low, instead it just hits the release really quickly. And we have that. So I could dial this in. And we have ourselves a nice pluck sound. Let's bring this down and dial it in. We have a pluck sound. Now there's a couple things we can do to sort of beef it up, make it sound more interesting. But if this, you know, just take a second here and process this because a lot, we've set up a few things in very specific ways. It's worth making sure you can deliberately do this. Wipe out the patch, try to do it on your own, try to recreate these settings. And when you can get to the same point consistently and you know what things are doing, let's take the next steps to make it a bit cooler. So first we have a drive control. And I'm also gonna take the resonance down because I don't want that peak noise. I like that a little bit more versus that sound, which is a whole a whole nother genre, right? So I'm just gonna stick with sort of your normal low pass pluck. And the drive will add uh, extra harmonics to your signal. It's a type of distortion. Uh, for now, just turn it up, see if you like it. It's a color control. It changes how uh, it sounds. So, and we could mess with the resonance on this. Yep, 
Maybe something like that. And at this point, you know, I might turn the volume up. I go over a bit of a volume increase. And now we come over to our effects. Now there's a lot of effects in here. I'm not gonna go through them all, but we have another distortion in here. We have a reverb and the chorus actually would probably be a pretty good thing. There's a variety of delays. So I'm gonna turn on the chorus and just leave it on the default settings. And maybe I'll mix it. This is how much of the chorus is allowed in the signal. Just to give it a little more interest. And on this one, let's put a reverb. Uh, we'll put a room reverb on it and the mix will bring down just at the beginning. And there you go. We have a little pass pluck. At this point, I would encourage you to look at some of the presets, maybe try to reverse engineer exactly what they did. But this is some of the fundamentals you have to understand in order for you to begin to do things deliberately with the sound. Because now we could take these other controls like the step sequencer or the LFOs and hook them up to different parts of the synth to automatically move on their own, just like how the envelopes do that for these parts of the synth. And also I should mention here, uh, there is a filter mix that mixes the filter in. Right now it's on 100%, but we could actually have a percentage of it come through as direct sound, or you could turn the filter off here. And so you need to be aware of what this is at. If you turn the filter around and you don't hear it, this may be off. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.